Let's turn this Ooh, you suck. into this. Blender can import 2D vector files, which can then be converted into 3D models, but they need to be a specific format. You'll need your vector files, which could be logos, icons, or whatever else you want to convert into 3D models, to be exported out of Illustrator or your vector graphics editor of choice into an SVG file, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. For this example, I'll be using an SVG version of the Blender logo, which you could find on Blender's website. There are also plenty of sites that let you download SVGs for free. Once you have your SVG file ready, open up Blender. You can delete the default cube and the lamp, then go up to Preferences, and in the Add-ons tab, search for SVG, then turn on the SVG add-on. Now you could close the Preferences window and go up to File, Import, SVG, and locate the vector file that you want to import. It imports into the center of your 3D window really small, so select the vector file, and it might have multiple pieces, so make sure to select them all, and then scale them up by 10 to 20 times. The nice thing about this is that if your SVG file has colors in the file, Blender will apply those colors to each mesh that's imported. I find it helpful to rename the different layers of the vector files to something more useful in the outliner. This will make it easier to solo the section that you want to work on. After that, rename the collection as well if you need to. This next part is optional, but I would recommend it because it gives you more flexibility in how your model will look. If you don't care about adding bevel to your edges and you just want a sharp 3D extrusion for your vector file, then you could go into the Curves tab and extrude each element immediately. But if you do want to bevel your vector file, you'll have more freedom if you convert your vector file to a mesh object. Before doing that, Let's duplicate the collection our vector files are in and add backup to the end of the collection name. Then turn off the visibility and the rendering in the outliner. Now if anything goes wrong, we could always go back to this original version. Now we could select all the elements we just imported and convert them into a mesh. You can right click on the highlighted object and then go to convert to and select mesh. Let's do that for each piece before we move on. Once that's done, we can start cleaning up the mesh. Depending on how clean the vector file was, you might not have too much to do. If you look here, you can see some weird clusters of vertices around some corners or curves. I'm just highlighting the vertices that I want to delete. Then I press X, Dissolve Vertices. This will delete the vertices without breaking any edges or faces, which would happen if you just deleted the vertices instead of dissolving them. To combine these two vertices, first I'll select the vertex that I want to keep, then I'll select the vertex that I want to merge into the first one. Now press M, merge at first. We can use these two techniques to clean up the rest of the meshes. Once the vertices are cleaned up, we can start cleaning up the faces. In edit mode, press the 3 key in the top number bar on your keyboard, or you could go up here and click face select mode. Now press the C key to use the highlight tool and we could start selecting clusters of these faces. Once you're happy with your selection, press F to convert all of the selected faces into a single end gon. We're going to be doing this for the entire mesh. I usually break them up into two to four end gons, as few as I could get away with. If there's a hole in the center of a mesh, I break that up at least into two end gons. We'll be doing this with all of the meshes. For very simple meshes like this circle, we can just instantly select everything and press F. No cleanup required. And after we finish this step, we're almost done. By the way, if you're liking this tutorial and you'd like to support me and get access to the final project file for this animation, check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash blendertutor. For $5 a month, you can get access to all of the final project files from my tutorials. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. Now we could press A to select all faces and I to inset the faces. The farther you inset, the more room you'll have to bevel the edge later, but if you go too far, you could begin to get some weird overlapping face issues. If you start to get really weird visual artifacts right at the beginning of insetting, there are probably still some issues with your mesh and you're gonna have to go back and clean those up. Go ahead and repeat this process for each mesh that you have.
Once we have all of these beautiful cleaned up meshes, we could finally give them some depth. But before that, select all of your meshes and press Option A on the Mac and Control A on Windows and apply scale. Now the modifiers we add will work as intended and we won't get any weird results due to scaling. On our first mesh, let's add a solidify modifier and change the offset from negative one to one. Now adjust the thickness to whatever you think looks good. Once you're happy with that, let's add a bevel modifier. The default bevel amount of 0.1 will probably already be as much as your mesh will bevel, but if it looks too much, you could scale it down. I want a smooth bevel, so I'm upping the segments to six. You could keep it at one if you'd like a hard edge. Now right click on the mesh and shade smooth. If you have some weird shading issues on the corners, go to the object data properties tab, go down to normals and turn on auto smooth. The default is set to 30 degrees, but if you're still having weird shading issues, you could adjust that number. Once you're happy with the look of the first object, there's an easy way to copy modifiers to other objects. Select all of your meshes, then while holding shift, click on the mesh with the modifiers already set up so that the highlight color turns bright orange. Then press Command L on Mac or Control L on Windows and click Copy Modifiers. This will copy the exact modifiers and settings to each mesh from the selected object. I know that was a journey, but that's it. Now you can apply materials and lighting and even add animation. That's how I created this animation here. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on how I created this type of animation, let me know in the comments. I really love animating and I'd love to do more animation based tutorials in the future. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn how to destroy an object instead of building one, check out this tutorial on creating a cool disintegration effect in Blender.